Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Learn with Jason. Today on the show, we have Shar Styles. Shar, how you doing? I'm good, Jason. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm uh, I'm super excited to have you here. This is a a really fun topic for me. Uh, we we've been doing a bit of a creative coding week here on on Learn with Jason. So we had Dan Gorlick on on Tuesday. We did some uh, generative music with uh, with uh, uh, title cycles and you know, that was super fun. And I know that you and you and Dan have worked together before, right? Yes, we collaborate quite often. Yes. And so uh, before we dig into to that part of it, I would actually love for folks who aren't familiar with your work, do you want to give us a bit of a background on yourself? Yes. So I am a live visual uh, live programmer. So I, uh, as a performance, I will write shader code on stage where everyone can see my code. Um, and I create visuals alongside usually algorithmic music, but it can also work with any type of uh, music or any any kind of audience that would a- appreciates looking at code um, as they see the the one to one correspondence of the code that makes the visuals. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and so that's just it's something I love doing, and I love sharing it, and I love teaching it. So I'm really excited to be teaching you today, or rather going through it together because I always end up learn, learning something too. <laughs> so learning no, together I, today. I, I am so excited because, you know, we, we uh, I've talked about this a lot, but I I just love this idea of of code being a creative thing. I think that a lot of times we look at, at programming as being a very practical or pragmatic thing mm-hmm. where you have to, mm-hmm. it has to serve a purpose. It's for business. It's for accomplishing goals. And, and what I think is really interesting about what, what you're doing with this kind of, you know, performance is you're, you're taking something that somebody might look at and say, well, there's no way that that could be art. It's just code. And you're clearly mm-hmm. making art with it. And yes. I think yes. that's so fun. So how, how did you get into, like, I, I, actually, let me ask it a different way. Mm-hmm. At what point did the light bulb go on where you realized that code could be an artistic medium? Oh my gosh. Oh Lord. So I <laughs> was very lucky to have met my mentor Golan Levin early on in, in like my, uh, I guess coding career. So I learned how to code when I was like 17. Um, mm. and it was, it was from Golan. So it was really like the, the first time that I kind of ever was getting into coding was through creative coding. Gosh. And when did the I wonder, it's like, when did I realize that code was, people thought code wasn't creative? Maybe that's the (laughs) the other question. (laughs) Yeah, so because the the first piece of code that I ever wrote was in processing, which is um, a Java library for creating graphics. It's kind of like like its predecessor. Maybe some people know like turtle-based graphics where you have like a turtle that puts, you know, you tell the turtle where to go and where to put the pencil down and the pencil up and it kind of creates like a plotter type uh, drawing. Nice, nice. Yeah. I it, this is a whole world that that is so new to me. Like I haven't really explored any of the like the generative art and stuff. It's more of like I I've seen other people do it, and I always thought, well, that's too hard. Like I <laughs> I, I don't think I can do that because it's not um, like you. We're today we're going to be using you called it GLSL. Is that right? Exactly. Yes. And so when I look at that, it's it. To me, as a as somebody who comes in from the front end world, it's very intimidating. We're looking at, oh. at things like Vex, and we're looking at uh, at you know full like class definitions and stuff, and and the things that I've seen before in other types of code. Like, uh, but it's very kind of it just feels all brand new. I'm like, oh my goodness, I don't have enough. I don't I don't know enough to be able to do this well. Um, yeah, it's a whole world. It really is. There's so many different types of creative coding. Um, from you know, there's like you could do creative coding in Python. You could do it mm. in C. You could probably also do it in assembly. I'm sure people have done that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it, and it's wild how broad that world is, right? You can, you can do so many cool things. I, I think when, when Dan was on, he was talking about somebody who dove into the byte code of like an old NES and figured out how to reconfigure that byte code to make art using the the NES, which is like, I didn't even think that was a possibility. I've seen people play with Game Boys. There's, incredible things that people are doing with Game Boys. Um, yes. <laughs> just so many amazing opportunities to do something that is is for the love of creation, not necessarily for collecting a paycheck or for, for accomplishing a practical goal. It's it's to 
to see something exist that didn't exist before. Um, so you're you're doing that in the form of, of visualizations, and what like I, I guess you said there are a lot of ways to do this. So so what is your preferred medium for for doing this? Well, it's what I'm teaching you today. It's uh, writing shaders. So this is shaders. If people don't know, it is code that is run on the GPU and it's run one time per pixel. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to write a function today that is being executed. I'm going to say this again, again, one time per pixel. And the input is the pixels position and the output is a color. So your input is like, you know, like a graph, like a 2D coordinate and your out when your job is to just transform that 2D coordinate into a color and oh. that's it. And it's such a nice little sandbox where you can like, you know, you start to imagine all of the different things that you could do with this very, very, very limited input. Mm -hmm. um, people have done amazing things. Uh, we won't get to it today, but you could using linear algebra create a tiny renderer that uh, looks into a 3D scene. You can make an, a video game only input is like the pixels position, but then you also, you know, you can also get like your, your mouse position and stuff like that. But the, the, uh, and, 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 you know, you can pass in something called a uniform, which is just shared buffer between the GPU and the CPU, but it is still very limited. Like at the base of it, it's just an X, Y position and output is a, you know, a red channel, green channel and a blue channel. Yeah. Yeah. And, and um, it's, it's, and it's amazing because all of this stuff, is is both simple and hard all at the same time right like it's it's like mm -hmm. a piano a piano oh. is incredibly simple because it's just buttons you push right there's mm -hmm. not there's nothing particularly complex about how to use a piano but to make really beautiful things there's a lot of skill there can be a lifetime of effort behind using it really well and doing something truly unique and this feels the same way like all we're doing is changing the color of a pixel okay well i get that mm -hmm. fundamentally but the yeah. things that you see people do with it are, oh my goodness, they're just, they're incredible. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I think it's, uh, it's, it's really, really interesting. <laughs> David, David, uh, David Korshid is saying pianos are complex. I, the, in, the insides of pianos are very complex, but for me, I'm like, oh, <laughs> buttons. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, so I am, I'm kind of interested in like, as you start looking at this, you're you're talking about um, we're changing one one pixel at a time, and in order to do that, we start getting into what I would consider to be some pretty algorithmic. Like we're we're now looking at like fairly heavy computer sciencey things of of like okay, let's let's take this and then I'm gonna you know do something interesting with it, and we're gonna try to make this look like it's pulsing or whatever, and and trying yes. to make a you know a circle get bigger or smaller when you're doing it one pixel at a time is. Mm -hmm. suddenly the math gets interesting um, yes there's so much math and i love it because it's, <laughs> it's like like a lot of times with programming you don't necessarily like get to do math in the way that you do math when mm. you're shader when you're coding shaders um because of this like very limited it's almost like it's so close to like the hardware it's so like at a lower level you kind of mm. you have to start speaking their language which is eh. Yeah. And I think that, you know, the thing that's interesting about math is that I, I feel like when I was a kid, I was really resistant to math. I, I, people would show me math and I would be like, this is not interesting. Like it's not useful to do theoretical math longhand oh on a piece of yeah, paper. Yeah. The way right? that people teach it's... math is like, <laughs> it could be so much more fun. And that's where a light bulb went off for me was when I, when I started looking at more of this creative coding, where I realized mm -hmm. that if you start bringing in some like some of the more advanced geometry or trigonometry, like suddenly you're doing really interesting stuff here. Like you've yes. got beautiful patterns. You've got really reactive things. This, you oh know, these gosh, really yes. gorgeous outcomes. And that's, it's the same math, just mm -hmm. in a much more interesting application. And a, an example, last night I was reading a book um, that's like, it's like, you know, math for game engines. And mm. they was going over like what dot product was. And it was like, you know, this is how you compute dot, dot product. This is what it looks like in code. And then after that, it was done with dot product. And I was like, wait, but it didn't explain that you can <laughs> use dot product to create a very kind of like uh, simple way to shade 3D objects. I'm like, you could have just included like one line, be like dot product is, is a way that you can kind of, um, get like the percentage of array from 
well, the, the difference of a rays direction from the light direction, and then you can color an object based on that, like using just the dot product. And I feel like, like, had I not known that before, I would have been right. like, I would have just like forgotten everything about dot product, but this like application of dot product, I think really like made it like stick to my brain that I didn't learn from the book. I learned it from shader coding or you know, like, you know, doing this kind of stuff. That's such a good point because by making a topic interesting in, in whatever way you find things to be interesting is is so important for retaining that information and and the the i have some anecdotal evidence for this because yes. i didn't like math in high school but there's one thing that i remember vividly which is parabolic math and the reason yes. that i remember that is that to learn parabolic math i did an extra credit project where i went out and i bought an old tv satellite dish and i covered it in aluminum foil and then i took out the transceiver and uh and put a nail there and i used it to cook marshmallows what <laughs> right and it was just like it was this goofy little project yeah. but oh, now I, I really understand how like why parabolas work the way they do and why satellites are made the way they are and all these things about the math that were practical right um yes. and, it, and it made it interesting and it made it fun and i got to make s'mores for my whole class by taking a satellite oh. dish outside right <laughs> and th this was this is like the only piece of math that i could do now none of <laughs> none of the rest of it stuck <laughs> amazing oh my gosh i need to see this i need i want to eat it i want to eat this, marsh this math marshmallow <laughs> yeah and it's and and i think you know this is the same thing like when i started learning uh physics for like right now you can see a couple people have dropped the boops and thank you chat for for participating i see a hype train is going thank you for the subs Sumena and uh and overa streams and who else subbed Ishan, thank you all so much for the sub. I really appreciate it. But so you can see Wait, here. So the, you made the, this this boops? You yes. Made these? Right. And so this is this is physics. Now I'm using a library called Matter.js, so I didn't have to do most of the math longhand. Oh, I but love what it. I what it started to make me understand is things like drag and things like gravity and and how something could bounce or how something could, you know, like how to how to simulate <laughs> friction. And that was really interesting versus the more theoretical parts of of physics and and the math that goes into it yes because, i don't know calculating gravity oh yeah 9.8 meters per second per second yeah, okay yeah. i under i've memorized that but it doesn't yeah. mean anything but when you go outside and you like do the test where uh like the mythbusters i think did one where they took they like shot a bullet and dropped something at at the same time and like the bullet mm -hmm. and the the coin hit the ground at the exact same moment because gravity still works even if you're moving sideways what like that okay now i get the grant and now i get the math <laughs> yeah yeah oh it's so cool there's so there's so there's so this is just like a a world that opens when you realize that math isn't just like practice problems yes oh my goodness <laughs> yeah so many amazing things when when and and like you know math is shorthand to describe the world around us uh mm -hmm. and and i think we've abstracted it so far away that it just feels like a list of chores and not not a description exactly. of the world around us. Oh, um, so true. Oh yeah, geez. I know I miss Mythbusters too. Did, were you a Mythbusters fan? I was, and Mythbusters actually has this great example of how shaders work, where they loaded a. So they they, they showed how the CPU works, which is they had a paintball gun, this kind of like you know one at a time, uh, paint a picture just by shooting the the paint, oh. you know, made a smiley face, and then they were like, okay, this is how GPU works, and then they had like an array of like you know. I'd say hundreds of, of like paintball guns in like one go. And then they just shot it all at once. And it was just like <laughs> Mona Lisa. <laughs> uh, I ruined I ruin this suspense if anyone's going to go look at it. But that's, I use that when I teach uh, my course, I use that GIF to like illustrate the difference between like, okay, this is how you make something uh, image with the CPU. You have to do it one time, you know, sequentially, as opposed to the GPU where it happens all at once. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And that's, and this this feels like something that's relatively new GPUs I, and and the ability to like do this heavy mm -hmm. graphics yeah, to processing program your in GPU. the browser. Yeah, like the to program your GPU the first time you're able to do that was with I think RenderMan, which Pixar came out. So before that, GPUs were not programmable, and Pixar came out with RenderMan, which allowed you to write like a pixel shader um, in 2006. So it's you know a little less than 20 years old. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's and, uh, it's yeah. so cool. So, so, so yeah. cool. Um, yeah. All right. So I have I have one more question for you, which is you you have uh, you mentioned 
taken to doing this on stage. Like you do it as, as performance. Mm -hmm. Um, how did you get into that? Like, where do you, where does one even discover this world of, of coding as performance? Yes. So I just found it online because those were my interests of like making um, visuals, visualizations, art. I was like, a, I was a painter for a bit. And then, um, and then I also was really interested in computer science. And this was just kind of like, it made sense. And also mm. I was terrified of people looking at my screen. Like I would <laughs> freeze up and I wouldn't be able to move if anyone, if I just like felt the presence of someone behind me. So I was like, I have to, A, I have to get over this fear and B, this is like, right in my alley of uh, creating art. And so I just was like found it online by Googling. I was in Pittsburgh at the time. And then I just started deciding to call myself a live coder. And then the kind of the community like was, was like, what? Like, who are you? Cause it's like such like a niche thing. Like yeah. everyone kind of knows each other. And so then they, they kind of like welcomed me in. Um, and now I'm a part of, and now I'm in Brooklyn, I'm a part of Live Code uh, NYC collective here. And uh, that's how I got into it. It was just like through the, the community kind of welcoming me with my weird niche interest of both uh, <laughs> like computation and art. I, I find that so freaking cool that you, you started because the thing that you started terrified you. Oh my gosh, uh, yeah, that have, that's I, a theme in my life. <laughs> I love that. I love that as a, you know, I, I know that this doesn't work for everybody, but it's, it's something that I've, I've kind of adopted as well, which is like, when I'm uncomfortable, I have to move toward it. I'm like, okay, yes. so clearly there's some, there's something that I need to do that's going to help me grow here. And, uh, and I love, I love seeing people just kind of say, all right, this makes me super nervous. Yep. Here we go. Let's do it. <laughs> let's do more of it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and I, I love it too, because it's, it's so interesting to, you know, I, this is a whole world that I didn't realize existed. I didn't realize it could exist. Um, and I come from well, welcome. <laughs> I and I'm so excited because I come from a world of live performance. I was a, a musician. I was I toured for a long time. I what? you know there was a, a few years where I played like 200 shows a year around the Western U.S. And the whole time I loved being up on stage and I was learning how to build stuff because our band didn't make any money because we were terrible. And so I also <laughs> That's built not our change web life coding. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, you know, I, I designed our merch and I, I built yeah. our website and I managed our, our MySpace page and did all oh, these customizations, yes. right? And I was learning all this stuff and had no mm -hmm. idea that there was a way that I could merge those interests. I've always talked about it as being a musician taught me everything about being a coder except mm -hmm. live performance. That's the only skill that didn't transfer over. And now you're showing me that actually all of it can transfer over. I, I can Hell use yeah. every pit of, of my former career as a struggling musician and yes. actually bring that into this new skill set. And I think that is amazing. And I, okay, we're I know putting you on the of... next bill. Like you're going to perform. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so cool. And, and I think this is, I hope this is inspiring for the chat too, because I have spent a lot of time talking to people in this chat and, and across Twitter a surprising number of developers started out as musicians. And I think I like, I know David Korshid is in the, is in the chat today. He's a musician, right? Um, I, mm -hmm. I used to be in a band. A lot of people that I work with play instruments used to be, uh, used to be in bands, um, want to be in bands. You know, it's, it's such a, it's such an interesting origin story that so many people have musical backgrounds and end up in coding, mm -hmm. but almost none of us, are still making music. We're all like, well, it's, you know, I'm hoping that someday so, I, yeah, I so get enough free time yeah. to have a musical hobby again. This feels a little more approachable than me trying to like practice guitar or practice piano because I don't have a ton of time for that, but I practice code all day. Like I can yeah. step into algorithmic music because I know it, you know, anyways, this is very exciting. It's very, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah Magnista is saying it, it, also a, a former, a former musician and, and Wingman is saying the only one at your company who doesn't play guitar, that's well. Wing that sign. <laughs> it's time. You gotta you can tell you what, you can start like I did and learn Wonderwall. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> For All me, right. I, I I started getting into like uh playing guitar because be actually because through live coding, which is funny, I went the other way. Oh wow. So through coding, I started making music. Um and I learned my like Wonderwall was video games by Lana Del Rey. So <laughs> Oh, nice, nice, nice. <laughs> This is this is so cool. I love it. So, um, how like 
how would somebody find a, a show near them? Is there a, is there a community yes. where I can go say like, Hey, I'm in, I'm in Portland, Oregon. I want to go find a live coding performance or like a group of live coders near me. So there's toplap.org. Um, and I believe there's all of like the nodes, like the, the different nodes of like live code. Oh my God. Wait, is it broken? No, they just changed the website. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So yeah. So top lap, I bet it's in top lap wiki. And then I bet if you, it's somewhere where it has all of the different nodes of like where people live. Um, but I bet if you just like, like look up like algo rave and then like your city or something there, there, there's a small chance that there will be a, um, a community already. Nice. And if not, you're always welcome to start one. Like I, I was one of the founders for the Pittsburgh, um, uh, group that, that we made. Um, uh, there's one, I know there's cool. one in New York and then Dan talked about the adjacent kind of life code group in San Francisco. There's also a bunch in like Europe and all that. Mm -hmm. the, the scene over here in America is different than the scene in, in Europe. It's much more like academic, which is fun. Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, there's all also right. a New Mexico scene and there's a style of New Mexico live coding that I heard I've heard. So if anyone's from New Mexico and does live coding, he's like, that's not how we do it. I'm sorry. This is just the rumor uh, word on the street is that you have to start from a blank page and it's only text-based uh, code, oh. but yeah. Fun fact about New Mexico. <laughs> nice. Nice. I love yeah. that. That's super fun. Yeah. Um, that's, that's like intense. All right. So what do you think? Should we, should we start actually looking at this? I am dying to, yes. to see how this all works. So let's switch over and get into a mm -hmm. uh, pair programming view here. And while we're doing that, I'm going to do a quick shout out to our, our uh, live captioning today. We've got Ashley with us from White Coat Captioning taking all this stuff down. You can see those captions on the homepage of the site. And while you're checking that out, make sure you take a look at our sponsors because that is who makes this live captioning possible. We've got Netlify, Fauna, and Auth0 all kicking in to make the show more accessible and keep the other lights on as well. We are talking to Shar today, so if you want to get more information, you can go give her a follow on on the old Twitter. Um, and this is that Mona Lisa video. Uh, I'll make sure this goes into <laughs> the um, into the show notes. I probably won't watch this just in case there's like a, a takedown. And then I found Top Lap, so here's a list of of different communities oh, and the the nodes. So that being said, I'm ready. I wanna I wanna try to dive in and and get a, get my first shader up and running how Ooh, would exciting. one start so there's many ways to start you can have uh, you can just actually just go to a website um like there's uh i my website that i use uh the thing is with live coding is that the joke is is that everyone kind of eventually makes their own tool and so this is the tool that uh, i need okay okay um so this is shader.place um and so you can either go there uh which we uh, or, or you can also um, use a native app like Code Life, which is what I use a lot of the times. Uh, and you can also uh, use a different online app that's uh, like um, The Force by Sean Lawson. There's so many different ways, but basically. What, what, sorry, what's that? Is it an app? <laughs> oh, Co Code Life. Oh, it's with a K. So it's like a, ah, like a Kardashian. Yeah. Like a Kardashian. <laughs> It's the Kardashian of, of, of applications. Uh, this one here? Yes. Yes, Hexer. Yeah. So I use that for my performances. Um, I, they're great people too. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, so that's for if you wanted to do native. But online, um, I either use my, my own uh, shader place. Yes, right there. Or, uh, or you can use... Um, I'm going to also p pitch this at the end. You can also use the internal editor for the, uh, the book of shaders by Patricio Gonzalez Vivo. Um, so there's, there's so many ways to get into it. I kind of wish I had a more succinct answer kind of lined up, but there's, there's many, many, many tools. <laughs> no, I think this is, I mean, and, and the nice thing about it is that it, it kind of shows there's not a, there are no rules here. You, you can go Absolutely. in and, and experiment with this. However, it's chaos. You want. <laughs> Um, and chaos is where I live. So I'm very excited about that. Yes. And so today we're going to be using shader place, right? And so we, yes. we set up a room and the reason that, uh, it, like the reason we're going to use this is this is real time collaborative, which means that both Shar and I are going to be in the same room. However, yes. because you hooligans can't be trusted, we're not going to tell you which room <laughs> we're in. So we yes. set one up ahead of time. <laughs> 
and so you can see me up here. So like, if you look at my mouse underneath the uniform, I was going to write like, yes. hi, this is Char. You so that's hackers, where, where my mouse you, is. You dirty hackers. Um, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah. And so this is like a way that I, um, I started teaching shaders over the pandemic virtually. And instead of like, I would always like be uh, doing it through zoom and the refresh rate on zoom is just like, it just wasn't fun. It wasn't smooth. And the students were mm -hmm. kind of like, it's just this weird translation. But then I was like, okay, the code is actually way less information and also the ultimate compression algorithm right. for creating this image. And so I decided that it would just be easier to send each other the code and have it render locally. Um, yeah. So this is, that's the whole, like, um, I guess and, the reason why this, this app, I mean, this website exists. And so looking at this, it's like also what, what we're looking at here, this is all of the code that's making this visualization in the background. Is that correct? Exactly. Yes. That is wild. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's such a, it's a very strong like a very strong language that um is very particular and peculiar um but it is extremely rewarding because the bugs that you get are beautiful like what <laughs> programming experience do you have where you're like this is the most i couldn't have imagined to make something more beautiful than my mistake um and that's <sighs> another reason why i think that this is just a wonderful way to get into creative code i mean it is kind of like it's c syntax and so if some of you are c programmers you might be looking at this and being like oh this i recognize what's happening here um and so that makes it kind of finicky because you know if you get a freaking semicolon it freaks out right right um, <laughs> um so it's it's like high risk high reward kind of getting into creative code. And there are a lot and that's the only way i like yeah. to live code yes <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Okay, great. Um, okay, so why don't we just kind of, I get it, I'll, maybe I'll do a little like explanation. What is happening here? Yes, and please. To, to get everyone, um, I'm expecting, uh, like my expectation for like someone watching this is that they have some coding experience. Um, so I'm not going to like, you know, explain variables or something like that but they haven't seen a shader before. So that's the kind of expectation. Oh, I guess Jason is. <laughs> that Jason has like a lot of coding experience though, but I'm gonna probably over explain some things that you might already understand. Okay. No, that's that's so, what we want, especially when we're super. looking at like C-like syntax. I have no idea what I'm doing in here. It's super wonderful. I love that. Cause that means that, um, you know, you have like a blank blank slate for this and we're gonna have see beautiful things happen. Um, head head empty, only vibes. Yes, <laughs> all about that life. So, okay. So you're probably wondering what these variables are doing up here. So you see where I just highlighted it, line six, seven, eight. Um, these are the shared memory between the CPU and the GPU. So these are things mm. that the CPU can um, see and it tells the GPU, this is the resolution of your screen. This is a, um, a variable that is increasing that we're calling time. So time is uh, something that it, uh, is a number that is just ever increasing, um, you know, plus mm -hmm. plus on the CPU. Um, also, this, this volume variable is uh, we already um, got our volume in, so it's like taking in our microphone. So we have a basically a number that goes from zero to one, corresponding to the volume of the input of of us. Um, and so that's that's what this is. And uniform is basically that's what is telling the shader program that this is a shared piece of uh of um memory so gotcha um, gotcha yeah so that's so you don't have to, we're not going to change any of this i just wanted to like tell everyone and what this does up here uh line three if you're just wondering this basically just sets the precision of a float um you don't need to worry about it we're not going to change it okay, okay now getting into this big function right here main so this is the function that is being run one time per pixel and if we do the math i can't get the exact number, but if we do like, let's say this is like HD, you know, 1080 by 720 or wait, no, that's not HD. 1080, 1280 by, by 720. Okay. Got it. <laughs> um, so like, let's say it's that times, uh, this is running at like 60 times a second. That's over 100 million times a second. Ooh. 100. Yes. <laughs> that's like, you know, uh, like eight zeros, like one and eight, like that's yeah, huge amount of we... times it's running per second really made these um, rocks think fast exactly yeah <laughs> <laughs> wonderful yes and so that's why 
we can do so much with such little code. Like we could even make something more beautiful with like, you know, less, less, uh, less code. Mm -hmm. um, but I kind of made it a little super, superfluous so that it's like, you know, it's easy to kind of pick apart and understand. Sure, um, yeah. So let's get into the first variable. So this uh, norm chord, this is the pixel's position. So I mentioned before the input is gotcha. the pixel's position and the output is the color. So this is what this is. The, um, we, we get our pixel's position from this GL frag chord. This is like a global that belongs to GLSL. Um, okay. And the X, Y position is just, you know, the X and the Y coordinate. And then mm -hmm. we divide it by the resolution because it's just easier to think about things in terms from zero to one. And then that, that's kind of like a repeating a repeating theme in shader coding is that we always want to just like be thinking about things from zero to one, um, uh, including color. And so um, zero, zero, zero is going to be like the, the very top, uh, top left, be the bottom, 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 left. bottom yeah. left. Oh, and then, so I, everything will kind of, or go yeah, this it, way, I guess, like up into the exactly. right. Exactly. Gotcha. Yeah, exactly. So we can actually visualize that. So the output is the, so on line 29, we see the output is the, is the vector four, which is a red channel, green channel, blue channel, and then an alpha mm -hmm. channel, which we're not going to get into. Sure. Um, you can just ignore it, just make it one. And so like in the, um, so if we make the color chord, so norm chord is a, is a, um, is a vector two. So we want to be able to uh, fill up four four channels and we only have um, actually three of them filled up. So if we put the third channel, like if we just make it zero, um, then we can, oh yeah, I put a dot there. Uh, there we go. Um, norm chord, did I, oh, I spelled that wrong. <laughs> Oh, great. So now we are visualizing oh. the position. Yeah. And so we see, so we see in the bottom left hand corner, it's black because the X, Y position is zero, zero. And then in the top right corner, it's yellow because if red and because for some reason in, uh, you know, shader coding, red and green make yellow, which isn't necessarily like true for like paints, but uh, here, solid, red and green make yellow. <laughs> yeah. solid math, right? Like, yeah, it, yeah. That's, that's exactly what it's I like, learned when I did. It's color like wheel. additive color. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but we can make it, we can make it white if we make the blue channel one. So if, oh, if the red okay. channel, green channel and blue channel are, are all one, it becomes white in the corner. Yeah. And so this is like the most like basic shader that you can get. Like we could actually just delete like all of this. And then like, this is very simple, basic shader of like inputs position, output is color. You just basically visualize the pixels position as a color. Right. Yeah. Um, but I want to show you everything else that's happening here. So we'll just put this back to where it was before. R, G, E, great. Um, and so here, what, what's happening on this next? Also, like we're, we're going to get to writing code. I just want to like explain everything first sure, before, sure, sure. before we actually start like changing things and, um, you know, incorporating the, the volume and stuff like that. Um, so this uh, UV right here, we're basically just um, like if we visualize this UV, we're basically just moving it such that UV is uh, it's it's in the center. So let's make this. So we see that the, the center is zero zero because that's and the the bottom left is negative one negative one and the top right is one one. It's just like mm -hmm. it's also kind of like a convention. You don't necessarily have to do that, but it just makes like um, creating things like easier to think about. Gotcha. Um, and so. And finally, we have our red, our what we what I have is the art red channel. And basically, what's happening here is uh, so on line twenty, we have the UVX. So if we actually just have it be a sign of UVX, we can see that it's just a fade from you know the representation right. of the X position. Yeah. And then if when we add time, then it, it that starts moves move, it along exactly. The, yeah. Oh, that okay. Yes. All right. So. A key dot now connects because yes. the way that we're animating is by using the clock. So yes, what we're exactly. basically saying is like, I, I want to do some, some kind of loop. So I mm -hmm. need to say, if I want it to happen at 60 frames a second, then if the clock is advancing at a thousand milliseconds, then you would do a thousand milliseconds divided by 60. And then every, every, whatever that increment is, cause I'm bad at mental math. We, <laughs> we move the thing forward one frame. Um, exactly. But in, in this case, what you're doing is you're just saying, take the, the sine wave and mm -hmm. just bump it over by the amount of time. And that way it yeah, just kind of continuously UVX. flows 
Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Yes. So first dot connected chat. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> and then the, um, the, yes. And then like, you can do something like increase the frequency. So if we were to like multiply this by like 10, we see that the frequency increases. Um, and mm -hmm. that's, that's actually what we're doing down here for the green channel. We basically just, um, gotcha. uh, increase the frequency and then we, um that's that's actually all it does and then we also switch it from the y to x so if i were to just visualize the green channel we see that now it's visualizing the y position at a higher frequency and that's why it's kind of going up and down um great and then finally um the b channel so the blue channel so if we were to just do that so it's happening here this is one it's like a little bit more like kind of are just gonna have to be like trust me <laughs> so basically <laughs> it's like like when we say um, x divided by y, x over y, we see that like, so when x, so let's just do it without the mod um, here. So this is what it looks like. So basically um, like when x and y are both one, which you can see in the right corner, it's one. And then when x decreases, um, it, becomes darker but then when x is negative it kind of goes back to being when x and y are right. both negative it's it's a lighter color so that's why that's what's happening here um and then what the mod does is that basically just has it um repeat over and over again um do you can, should i do you think I that's like a, mod, a modulo right exactly yeah modulo so, from zero to one so in javascript this would be like if you did uh you know whatever percent sign two and then it would be kind of showing you an odd or even based on like it, it shows whatever the remainder is right mm -hmm. exactly yes exactly yeah it actually it, it even i could have actually just done uh fract which is the the same thing as as mod of one um yeah so that's it's the same oh, thing okay. basically okay. because i did mod of one um fract just basically like takes away whatever whole number is in front of the output and so, so but dot. with with if we wanted to make it like a mod of two or something, which in this case, I don't think would be yeah. what we want, but we, yeah, because we can't color use only goes for that. From, yeah. But color only goes from zero to one. So if we did mod of two, we would, it would be um, a bunch of like, like you see where it's, where it's all white. Like there is right. information there, but it's not being perceived because color only it's goes from zero to one. Yeah. yeah. Which is kind gotcha. of nice that if you, if you kind of go out of range, it like doesn't error out. Like I, I could just actually set the color to like 1000 and mm. it would just render it white as if it was, you know, I set it to one. So that's kind of nice. Nice. Normalize all the things. Yes. Um, <laughs> great. Okay. So the, what I wanted to kind of get into today is I wanted to do a little bit of, uh, um, do a little bit of trigonometry beyond sign so what actually what time do we go till i should have asked this before we but... have about call it 45 minutes before we'll have to start wrapping it up okay great super we can do this so what i wanted to do today is i wanted to with you write a polar coordinate system to kind of create like a circular visualizer because like, you know, when you think of like, you know, visuals, you think of like, you know, something that's like kind of like a kaleidoscope that's kind of like radiating from the center that you put your face right in front of and then you just kind of like zone out. So I, so polar coordinates are very good for that um, experience. Okay, um, so are you, all right. So are you down to, to learn about polar coordinates in shaders? Oh, I'm down, I'm so down, I'm so ready. Yes. <laughs> I'm so excited. I love this because it, it uses A10 and I, and like the last time I used A10 was like in high school <laughs> so or, or like in like math class where you're like trying to like, you know, learn about triangles or something like that. There are, li there are no triangles in this situation where I could be drawing triangles, but. So can we, can we simplify this up a little bit to, to start, like maybe just start with like a Yes. Like all like exactly. go go plain white and then get rid of Can we we can keep the UV cuz we're going to use that. Keep the UV. So I'll get rid of yeah, our so RGB we'll delete... channels. Got exactly. It? Yes. Okay. Um, so I'm going to get rid of those. Super. All right. Okay. So now um what what we want to do um is hold on let me just set something up really quick on my end. Um, uh, maybe this one. 
Okay, so what we want to do first is is to get like um, is to start visualizing um, things in terms of of polar coordinates. And so what polar coordinates mm -hmm. are is a angle and a radius. So okay. um, so you can access any point on a screen by just giving a angle like a, where it is around the screen and a distance from the center. So the same way that you can access any pixel given like a Cartesian coordinate x y. You can also use polar coordinates to access any pixel on the screen. And it's very okay. easy to convert from Cartesian, which is what we have right now, to polar coordinates. Um, so first, to, there is a function that is kind of built into GLSL to get the length of, a, of any pixel to a zero, zero point. And it's just called length. So okay. uh, if we were to set up a float variable, so if you write float, and then let's call this, um, uh, let's call it radius radius equals, and then length of UV, of UV, and then we got our semicolon. And then if we just put that into color, you can just, in, in color in the VEC4, you can just write. Um, like yeah, you could, one you, could, of them or? you could put it as one of them or all of them um, because, uh, because. Oh, like if you do it like that? Yeah, that's, that's shorthand for filling gotcha. out all four uh, channels with the same thing. Gotcha. Um, so now we have visualized the, the, the radius of, yeah. of where the pixel is in the screen. Um, and if you wanted to do something like interesting to have it kind of be like fading outwards, you could put it like the kind of like canonical way of bringing, uh, of, of animating it is obviously like adding time, but then time is ever increasing. And so we need to like kind of bring it back down from zero to one. Um, so we can put it inside of like a sine wave or a cosine wave. Okay. Um, and so, so if I, I want... So in line 23, uh, well, actually we can make a, a new variable. We can say on line 24, we can say um, like float, uh, let's say like rings. Okay, float, float rings. Float rings equals um, sine of time plus radius. And then if we visualize, we put every, unfortunately, I only, we, there are only, um, there are only, uh, round boys in GLSL. So only round boys, only oh, round well. boys. There's no variant, unfortunately. <laughs> um, all right. So, yeah, I guess we can the, live with that. I know. And sadly, I was looking forward to being like, I think you put like square boys and round boys, <laughs> but alas, that is not happening today. Um, so, uh, if we wanted to like increase the frequency and make it look more like rings, um, what we could do is that we could just, um, inside of radius, uh, length of UV, if we multiply it, then it'll oscillate through uh, UV. You, you have to put like a dot because it's a float because it's new syntax. Ah, got it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So now we have our, our beautiful rings kind of coming out. Um, you are getting great. sleepy. Chad. You are getting very, very sleepy. <laughs> <laughs> um, and if we wanted it to go the opposite direction online, I'm going to do this one on line 25. Um, if I just make this a minus so we're subtracting time, now it's expanding outwards, which I feel like is, I can't explain oh, why, okay. but I feel like it's more hypnotic. I would um, agree. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then the next thing we want to do is uh so now we have our like you know our radius kind of uh our yeah our radius kind of like expanding outwards we want to get an angle mm -hmm. so the angle of where the pixel is oops i just hit the microphone so how we do that um is we s use a function atan so okay for all of like the, I can only relate to American school system. So if you were not an American school system, I'm sorry if you can't relate to this, but does anyone remember Sokatoa? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so, yes. So we're good. So Sokatoa. So basically Toa, right? So that's, uh, we, we want to use the, um, to, to get an angle, right? Cause tan, tan of something like, or uh, tan of an angle gets you the toa, the opposite over the adjacent. So if we only have the opposite over the adjacent and we want to get the angle, okay. then we're going to use a tan. So the reason why I keep saying opposite over adjacent, because if you were to think about, um, like the, an X, Y coordinate on a screen, like you have your right over run that kind of looks like the two legs of a, of a triangle, right? The, the, the two, um, not the, yeah. 
the opposite over the adjacent of the triangle. And then the hypotenuse is the distance from the center, right? So we yeah. have our X and our Y, and then the distance from the center is actually the hypotenuse. So that's why we're the, using ATAM. The chat is on a pun tear, but no, you're you're right, oh Ben. Let's Soka Goa. Soka Goa. Oh. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Okay, I'm deeply disappointed in you, chat, but I am very excited <laughs> about the the A tan here. So do I do I want to do that on like in? Re to replace the sine wave or are we doing that in addition let's do it in addition like we, we could um i kind of want to have both just because like right now we we're we're visual oh no no so let's um like uh Not let's chaos. have it be separate yeah let's have a different be separate chaos because like yeah so so because we can use both of these kind of visualizations of the oh, position okay. in our final music visualization ah. Aha, yes. So let's, we could do it above or below, um, whichever one you prefer. It, it is executed in order. And so sometimes you, you do have to think about like, um, you know, your- Execution order and all that. Exactly, yes. But this, because nothing is being modified in place, we don't have to think about it. Okay, gotcha. so float, we can say like float angle um, equals a tan, and then you want the opposite over adjacent. And so let's do UVX comma UVY. And so this is actually, if there's anyone here who has a, who has like eagle eyes might like, and then, and then if we visualize it, so in VEC, uh, sorry, my brain just jumped from one thing to another, but if we just visualize that perfect. Yes. So if Ooh. anyone here like knows um like what it what it should look like it might look a little off this is actually a tan 2 um oh. which which uh is different because it um it doesn't have this a uh, dis discontinuity if we were to use a regular so this is what regular a tan looks like but it has these two discontinuities but a tan 2 uh flips flips it over so that it's just a continuous uh continuous um curve or rather gradient until you you finish it so that's just a little glsl tidbit okay. um, and then again we, we see that we're losing a lot of information um, it's only the the upper right hand quadrant which is between zero and one um and so we can do i'll, I'll do this so we can like actually like also put it in like sign or rather yeah we can also put it in sign and then add time the, the same way that we did before um so now we oh. see it's this yeah it's this kind of like smooth gradient kind of coming around. And so we have written our polar coordinate system. Yes. Oh, oh, okay, great. Yes. Yeah, so oh, so right wrong. now, no, but I really want you to like, yes, think about it. Yes, yes, you did it. <laughs> 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 Wonderful. And now, oh. okay. So I think at, at this point, we just watch this for the remaining 40 minutes. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just kind of start drooling and, you know, all that, all that good stuff. <laughs> uh, so there's a question in the chat about it's, it, so this is an oval because we're building it, it against the, the screen resolution. Exactly. Um, do we want to make it a circle? We can, we can, we absolutely can. Unfortunately, our screens are not square and we have to just deal, <laughs> we have to like deal with it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I warned you, but... <laughs> We, we have to deal with it that our screens are not square unfortunately if we had a square screen it would look it would look um it would look very um uh perfectly circular so how we do that is we need to add a scalar to either our uvx or uvy i usually add it to my uvx um, and this is like where you like think about order so for every place so after you define uv you want to change the uh you want to redeclare UVX. And so I'm, I think mm -hmm. I'll, I'll write this one out just as I do it. So UV okay. dot X, and then you can say times equals, and then we're gonna use our U, that we're gonna use the, basically the percentage of UVX divided by UVY to rescale oh, UVX to- Oh, I got Yes, you. yes. Um, UV, our U resolution dot X divided by our U, dot y and it's a beautiful circle okay so <laughs> so now all of the math is based off zero zero mm -hmm. and we've converted the the x to be the the proper like aspect ratio yeah. 
Yeah. So, so now okay. X, yeah. Now X, instead of going from uh, negative one to one, it goes from like negative one point, I don't know, two to, to what point? whatever. What's you, the, what's the aspect ratio for 1280 by 720? I, I build these, these contain. So it's like yes. 56.25%, right? So now it goes zero to 0.5625. Wonderful. Okay. I learned something today too. <laughs> Oh, or wait, no, backwards. Seven. I went backwards. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Um, I'll. I but yeah, the, it's, anything. it's the sixteen. It's the sixteen by nine aspect ratio. So we're just basically doing that little bit of math, and that gives us the the right, like, you know, relatively speaking, they are square. But because it's a a wider viewport than a, a tall viewport, then yeah, it's mm -hmm. all that, all that. Yes. Good stuff. All that good stuff. Um, yeah, a lot of this stuff does translate to like, you know, whatever, like video editing and all that, all that good stuff. And, and this is the, the interesting thing about this is that math, that like aspect ratio math, that's a thing mm -hmm. that I use as part of uh, building responsive image containers, right? Mm. So this is a thing that I do in front end web development using like CSS. So the, this stuff, the, the math is practical math. It's not like we're doing things that are, are, wildly out of character for for us as programmers we're just using mm -hmm. them in a way that's visually cool to look at instead of trying yes. to make an image not squish somebody's head yes yes <laughs> and it's and it's frustrating in a different kind of way um than css um, <laughs> like uh like if you forget a semicolon my favorite error about this is that if you forget a semicolon the error happens on the line below it and it makes people be uh, like what's yes. wrong with this line and they like look at it for like 20 <laughs> minutes and then it's like no it's the line above it that's the problem um so <laughs> this, this has, yeah. it has its own headache but um okay so, the so final... this i mean this is so freaking cool though that we're we're getting yes. this uh, just like this is this feels like a lot of visualization for having spent 10 minutes on it. Yeah, right. Exactly. And like like another thing is that you can you can go and, and just start putting random stuff in. Like if I were to just like, I don't know what would happen if I did UVX divided by UV uh UVY. Like I don't know what would happen. Oh, that's that's what happens, you know, something like that. We could say. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> and so you, you can really just start playing around with all of the, the the numbers and the things. And so I even saw in the chat someone was like, oh let's have it oscillate between the the you know the 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 circles or you know ha sorry have it oscillate between the 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 un uncorrected aspect resolution and the correct aspect resolution to have this kind of like undulating circle. I'm like that's that's the whole that's the beauty of this kind of coding is that it gets someone so excited about like you know you you see the immediate realization of your code and then it makes you really excited and get all these ideas. It's like a totally different way of like of uh, of making images. Mm -hmm. I believe. Okay, I'm almost. Up. I believe that if Bob Ross was a programmer, he would be a shader programmer because it has so much joy and and fun in making mistakes. <laughs> happy little accidents in happy little accidents exactly <laughs> i love it i'm i'm super yeah. excited me too i love it so much um okay and then the final thing i wanted to so we have like you know th th some different things going on i i have two more things i want to i want to hit before uh before we you know before yeah. we start going going crazy and like you know doing all sorts of things um is i want to get a third uh, so, so right now we have our angle, our uh, radius visualized. I want to create a visualization that incorporates both. And then I also want to show you um, how to traverse through color space in a different way that's not necessarily red channel, you are this, green channel, you are this, blue channel, you are this, mm, instead okay. traversing through a color palette. Um, what is known as a cosine Ooh. palette. So yeah, okay. so the, those are the those are the next two things I want to show you. And then we can start taking requests or like, you know, just kind of, you know, you, we can do anything. Um, yeah. Yeah, let's okay. do it. So um, let's have our, uh, um, I'll, I, I'll, I'll have you kind of write this because it, it, it can, I just basically want you to combine basically the the length and the, uh the length the, the 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 radius and the angle in some in some way because if you combine both of those you you potentially can either like be, get a swirl type situation or some some like um something that is incorporating both so you can say yes yeah, swirly perfecto okay <laughs> and so you can and say like it, it, like it, it can be like you know um sign of of rings plus 
uh, angle and plus time and see, and just to see what happens. Um, and then if we visualize, yeah. And then if we just visualize that swirly. So we see that, that it is this, this kind of swirly like type thing. It's kind of Ooh. like these crescent moons coming around. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. So um, then we can play with it the other way. Yeah. And you can and you also get... do something like, like you can so put a cosine cool. in, in an angle. Uh, you can put them like inside of each other. Did that, did that just make it go away? No, it actually didn't do much. Um, so uh, I'm trying to think let's, of... let's, let's isolate these for yeah. a second and see what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. So it's still this kind of like crescent moon type situation. Would it be outside? I'm trying to think. Would it be cosine of like just this? See what happens. Okay, cool. We have this kind of like. Okay. We got some. Yeah. I'm going to change these to zero so they're easier to see over the stream. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Ah. Oh, All right. Now we got it. some interesting stuff going on. <laughs> yeah. And so basically like what's happening here is that we're incorporating both like the, the angle, um, like as it goes around and the uh, distance as it kind of comes out. And so that's why we're getting features that are influenced by the position of its angle and its uh, distance to the center. They look like ripples. Yes. Visually exploring math. Exactly. I mean, these, this, yeah, these so, comments. so wild that we can do this stuff. And then, you know, if I want to make it, okay, let's have it go a different way. Right. We can, mm -hmm. we can start messing with it a little bit this way. And now it's, now it's weirder. And then like, this is yeah, just, and this like, is very, very interesting. Like what happens if we divide it? Oh, nothing really. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. Um, Okay, great. So now we have like a combo of both. The, the next thing I'm gonna do is um, I'm going to copy and paste in a function called a cosine palette, um, just okay. because like we, we, we could write it out, but um, like, I feel like um, it's, it's a little easier to, there we go. It's a little easier to um, just like kind of copy and paste it in and then I'll explain it. So I'm just putting it sure. above the main function because we're going to use it in main function. Um, okay. And then we see here in the, um, uh, this is, this is wrong. So I'll just, so if you want to read more about cosine palette, um, it, it, it's kind of like a, a way of visualizing color that's very canonical in shader coding. I'm not sure it can be traced back to like one person discovering it, um, but a really good article about how it's used is by this um, programmer called uh, named Inigo who made Shader Toy, if you're familiar with that. Um, and he has a great article about it here. I put in the, it's in the comment. And then also I have it graphed out on a graphing calculator to like, to mm. like visually be able to um, look at it. So basically what's happening here it's very small, very small function. It's basically just a cosine. That's this is uh, two two pi if you if you recognize it. So six point two eight three one. That's pi times two, um, two pi of of uh, your oscillation times t plus the phase. So t is like the number that's going to be traversing through your color palette, and then you use oh, okay. these following these following. Um, variables to define what your palette looks like so you can create okay. you can change the brightness the contrast the oscillation is how, how quickly it traverses through the palette and then the phase is like where each channel starts um oscillating its its cosine in the palette and Got so, it. so so yeah. to use this then i would get down here and i would set like uh, a float of r and that would be cost palette of um Right. Am I am I getting ahead of myself here? So I'm I'm thinking. No, like I think I think this is we great. Would go the only angle, yeah, and angle. then I got to get the nice. other values in here. So yeah, so these... we can define brightness. Three, I can three, uh, three. I can copy and paste in some some brightness yeah, variables. Yeah, just for just for the just the sake for... of not manually typing out things I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like um, R here. So I just have brightness, contrast, oscillation, and phase. So if you just write brightness. Brightness, contrast, oscillation, and then phase, perfecto. And then the, it's not going to compile because cosine palette returns a vector three. So of a, ah. it's a color. Yeah. Oh, whoops, sorry. Oops, I did a bad sorry. thing. I just started, I got <laughs> excited over we're, here. We're really putting my uh, the um uh Oh wait, so yeah, this anyway, is like the whole this is the whole thing over here. The I whole understand. thing? Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. I didn't understand what was going on. Okay. So um 
Wonderful. So it's, it's so, like, this is our VEC3. Yes, yes, exactly. And then that's, gotcha. so cosine palette returns a color. And so we can do something like we could do this plus swirl, swirly. And then now we have this like, wow, wow crazy. <laughs> We have this kind of like, um, you know, we're traversing through the, the, the this palette that we created using okay. our, our the, you know, the, the, um, whoops, where am the, I? Just a cosine. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> so we can just throw them all in here? Yeah, we can throw Holy them all in here. Holy <laughs> buckets, y'all. Look at this. <laughs> Yay. And then, okay, then the final thing, I actually had one more thing I wanted to show you is um, we want to actually be able to incorporate, you know, because this is all about being music visualizer i just wanted to um we can incorporate a number uh that is being passed in through the browser of the volume of the input mm -hmm. uh you know your music and so if we scroll up here on line eight that's this this floating point variable u u vol which is just the volume um and it's just a number that's going that goes from zero to one based on how much um how loud it is coming in so uh, we can we Got can it. do that somewhere uh let's do the bright we can put it in the what would be a what good if we, place i i think could we do it in like it the in... rings instead of the time so that the rings like yes get... yes exactly okay, okay so, so let's do say... what you vol yeah oh it's a little little wow jumpy. that's a lot okay so let's yeah. uh we can just divide that by like uh, times 0 0.1. Yeah, perfect. Wow. <laughs> so, okay, let's you know, make it it's, even it's, more subtle. Yeah. So, we but can, so, so if I make noise, it's right? It's not the best visualizer, but it's, it does its job. <laughs> and, and so what we would, what we'd probably want to do if, if we were going to get really into this is, is ease that somehow, right? Like kind of make Exactly. It, yeah. Do it, how so yeah. how does easing work in this environment because if the function's getting called fresh do we have a an easy way to kind of say level this out a little bit don't make it quite so reactive so unfortunately no we would have to do that on like um like the cpu side if we wanted to take like an average okay. or something of the uh of the volume because it's like okay. you know gpu code doesn't we don't we actually i could set it up such that it has like you know like a memory buffer but it it's very simple right now it doesn't have that so basically we're just kind of sure, like, for sure, now sure. we just have this like little thing um another like yeah so basically it has to happen on like the javascript side unfortunately but it shader place is open source so <laughs> <laughs> i'm taking full requests um <laughs> Um, so that's, it's, that's something I'm, I want to work on next too, um, because I just added this this morning <laughs> for, for, for this stream, which I'm happy it, it like, you know, I'm happy it's functioning, which is why I look ecstatic for this, like the fact that our music visualizer is just jiggling ever so slightly. No, I love, I mean, it's so fun that we're, we're getting that kind of reactivity to, yeah. you know, it's, it's only hooked up to my laptop mic right now. So mm -hmm. it's not this mic input, it's the laptop input, which is why only my voice is causing it. Or, you know, mm -hmm. if I get over here and snap at it a little bit, we can hear the, or we can see yeah. it happen. But um, this is so freaking cool that we now have, th this is not just a piece of art anymore. This is now an interactive thing. Yeah. And yes. What's, yes. what's incredible about this is that Volume's not the only input we can get, right? Like I imagine we can also pull in things like, uh, can we can we get data from the camera, for example, or data from yes, absolutely. you know other other inputs? Jason, I think you might be a creative coder. I think, uh, <laughs> I, I'm looking. I'm hearing you right now, and I'm like hearing like you know. I think you, this is something that you're really like natural at, and it's just gonna like. You know, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm super excited to see what other things you make. Cause it's exactly like you're on the right train of thought, like exactly. You can have input from your camera. You can even have an input from a back buffer and have it kind of mm. be this like, um, you know, create feedback and really beautiful things like that. Ooh. It's like so limitless. One of yeah. us. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm, I am so, so blown away by just how powerful all of this stuff is and so if we you know we okay take it down a little bit more we make it really subtle right we can go mm -hmm. uh like here so now it's oh night mode right like yeah everybody settled in you're watching what, what, what are the <laughs> old gas stations like <laughs> exactly <laughs> am 600 talk radio um 
no, this is I, I oh, I'm so excited about this because you can I can just see how many fun things start happening here as we dig in yes. deeper and deeper. And and you know, okay, so let's turn the contrast down. Now mm -hmm. it's now it's subtle, right? Or we turn it yeah, way right. the heck up. Now yeah, it's and we can too, make oh, it. that's too much. Yes, <laughs> very, very bright. So if we do like, one of my favorite things to do is if we turn the contrast down and then we, um, I have to put this, do the enter right here. Oh, hold on. This is, yeah, thank you. <laughs> it was the mouse. And then if we increase the, the brightness, we kind of get this like, well, it's a little oh, too bright. So yeah. we, we kind of get this like nice, like pastel type situation. Um, right. Another cool thing that you can do is that you can also just start playing around with with the, with these numbers. So I want to introduce a new function called mix, which I really like as a former painter, um, which you can mix between two numbers. So like we can say mix mm. 0 0.7 to like, you know, 0 0.1. And then you can just say um, sign of time. Uh, I messed up my parentheses. Oh, right here. Great. Um, and then mix sign of time. And then this goes here. Great. And so we see that this is now uh, like changing uh -huh. from sign of time. The reason why it's like kind of going up to in white because um, sign of time oscillates from negative one to one. And so to normalize that, we would just say plus one um, divided by two. Oh, cool. Okay. Divided by two. And then also another thing we can do, um, it's I'm still mad at me. Hold on. Uh, Oh, here. We have one extra. Oh, that Great. was my fault. I started touching them. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> that's, a, that, that's the one thing about the shader place. Um, and then we can also do something like um, UV or plus length of UV, UV here. And then we can have it kind of come in and out from the center um, because now it's, oh. now it's taking in from the center and we can increase this by like 20 and we get this kind of like, um, you know, ring effect again, but but now the ring effect is oscillating from the the brightness. So yeah, yes. So there's so many things you can do. And here. well, and we have a ring effect oscillating from the brightness, reacting to my voice. Yes. Like this is wild. <laughs> yes, I I love it. And yeah, it just becomes completely impossible. How much? I mean, impossible to like, you know, to stop. <laughs> <laughs> is why I'm still I still do it all the time today. I, I stay up way too late doing this kind of these kinds of things. Um, yeah. How do you know how much time we have left? I we I have forgetting. call it call it like ten maybe fifteen minutes to to go. Nice, nice. Okay. So, is there any kind of like um, area in which you want to explore some more, or I can kind of take the the lead and say start introducing new functions and um, let's uh, let's have you take the lead because I feel like there there are some things that you know exist that I don't, so you can probably show us more interesting things than than I'll be able to imagine in the next ten minutes. <laughs> Great. Okay. So one thing that I can show oh okay so one thing that i i really like is this uh function called uh mod polar and so again like i know we we already converted it to polar coordinates but we can also like re reflect well should i do that hold on do i want to do that one or do i want to do oh okay so we can either do like a figure i can introduce a function that gives you kaleidoscope or i can introduce a function that um, you can use to get like a BPM or rather that that uh, spikes at a certain BPM. So you can kind of like mm. ha have a variable, like you can set the BPM to this, this function that will return a number that spikes at zero or at, at like a beat. Yes. Yes, okay. <laughs> yes to both. <laughs> uh, no, let's do um, the beat. Let's, let's do a beat. Okay, that sounds great. like fun. Beat. Okay, so I'm going to copy and paste this function in, um, and it's going to be, uh, let's, I'm putting it right below cosine palette, um, okay. and I have to replace 3.14, um, and it's still, oh, U time. Great. Okay, I had to convert it a little bit, but this get BPM function, so it takes in a beats per minute, and then mm -hmm. um, it returns a floating point number, and this number will just spike that many times per minute. Um, so nice. it's, okay. it, it's, it'll be really easy to use so we can just figure out like where, where to put it. So like, let's say we wanted the, Ooh, let's have the phase. Let's have the, 
Yeah. Mm, okay. All right. Let's do Actually, it. Let's let's have what would what would be cool. Oh, let's have it actually. Well, let's let's first just just create a floating point number. So float, and let's just call this beat beat equals. Oh, I'm on line sixty two. Sorry. Gotcha. Um, float beat and then get BPM viz. And let's just say like what's what's a good BPM one. Like one twenty is the standard, right? Yeah, yeah one twenty. Um, so now we have this this beat variable that we can just put in different places. So if we wanted to like multiply the phase by, uh, or let's just multiply one variable by the beat just in case it's too stroby. Okay. Uh, let's see. Can we see a difference? I Maybe. don't see a difference. Let's try it here. Well. I'm just going to put it in different places. Maybe the contrast. Wait a second. Is it working? I don't know if it's working. Hmm, effect for um, beat. Oh, it's not working. Hold on a second. What's wrong? BPM. Hmm, this function can be crafted here. Well, there's something wrong. 3.14. Oh, maybe it's because U time is different. Well, I should have tested this before. Um, Sadly, this is uh, also another thing about like GLSL is that it's like it's very um, like because it's a it's a very like globally kind of used language like you can use it in all these different situations. Tran transferring like functions from one place to another can sometimes sure. like I, I usually use uh, the force, which is where I wrote this function, but doesn't happen. Okay, doesn't matter. BPM. This is eventually I get, I can get it to work and then we'll maybe if we have time in the end but um i'll show you instead the other thing i was going to show you which is uh the kaleidoscope effect which is always really mm -hmm. fun um, so we can just set this to color again color beautiful okay so the <laughs> the other um uh, function I want to show you is this mod polar function. Yes. Uh, and so this one, I'm going to paste up above again. Uh, also, I, I have like, um, I should probably paste the link, but I have this like gist of what I call sticker sheets, which is basically just like functions that you can kind of copy and paste in. And then oh, nice. it will, yeah. Uh, oh, oh, I used, hold on. We can do this actually. Um, this is my own modified version of mod polar. Uh, we can define pi up here. Pi 3.14. Um, and then why is it still mad at me? Oh yeah, U time. Uh, we can actually delete this. Okay, great. So now this function, what it's going to do is it's going to modify the UV vertices such that it repeats mm -hmm. in the in like a pie slice going around the center. Um, so okay. mod polar, we can see that it returns a vector two. So we're going to use it to redefine UV, and it takes in vector two in how many repetitions, so how many pie slices do we want? Um, okay. So, okay. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go before, like after we, um, after we normalize, or rather after we fix UV's resolution, we want to change UV before we use it for anything else. So on line 57, um, we can say UV equals M mod polar UV. And like, let's say, like, let's just do four to begin with. Um, mod polar, did I spell this wrong? Mod polar vec2 float repetitions. Uh, Oh, because this has to be point. Okay, great. And so now we see that it's like it's like repeating um, right. in in these four directions. So if we wanted it to be like uh, let's say like eight, you can see that it's repeating in eight slices. Gotcha. And we can say like ten, and then we can also have this be a number times sine of time, and we see that it's increasing and decreasing. Yes. Yes. Ooh, wow. <laughs> and then another thing we can do, another thing that's interesting is that so so because our visualization is already pretty centered, if we if we um, if we kind of add a little offset, okay. um, 
it'll, you can kind of see how, oh, because I have, <laughs> hold on. I have to add that after I do the mod folder. Here we go. Great. And now we can kind of see uh, it change a little bit more <laughs> because we're offsetting the center um, so that it's less um, symmetrical from the center. Uh, yes. If that makes sense. Okay. Yes. No, this is amazing. Okay. And so um, <laughs> for, for this, we probably want like, Oh, that's that's dope. And so, if we wanted to keep <laughs> this as like moment. a, <laughs> sorry, I love that moment so we, where you're just like mid sentence. You're like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if we if we break this, if we just set this as like four slices, then <gasps> then we get kind wow. of a standard effect, right? So we get like a starburst, which is oh, so we just did forty, is what I just did. Yeah, Didn't realize that. that's, I love that. Um, that's so pretty, though. Oh, yeah, so now beautiful. we get like a cool starburst kind of flower looking thing. Yeah, it looks like and a marble effect. Yeah. And I, I love and what's interesting about this is I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. And we kind yes. of just stumbled around and, and put different stuff in place and ended up with this this really cool looking thing. And so oh we God, can, you know, yes. simplify it further. Okay, so there's just four. Eh, all right, that's fine. But what about yeah. 20? Right. 20 and, and so now I can just kind of you know flap my arms around and see what happens <laughs> and we're getting some really really interesting stuff so yes. I, I love the, this I mean the, this is scratching a lot of my my desire to be creative like I always want yay. to just see stuff and, and I'm also this is embedded in a in a browser right we're we're looking at a web page right now which exactly. means if you wanted to do something like reacting to the volume as part of your home page on your website, for example, you could do that. You could embed these types of visualizations right into your site as a standing interactive piece, or you can, you know, go and do this as a live performance, which is also incredible. And so when you do a live performance, how, how do you pull, is there a way to just like pull the music right in here? Or is that what you're using the apps for? That's what I use the apps for. So um, I, I don't think I've ever performed with Shader Place. It's more of like a teaching tool. The tool that I perform with, which is Code Life, um, will actually break up the um, music, the the input wave of the music into. It'll do fast forward, your transform, and do the give me the different bins, so I can um, I can give get a range of like you know oh this sound is within this range, and then I'll just have that be linked to some okay. sort of variable yeah and so when when you're using something like code life you can you can even get frequency ranges and and say like yes. well, this i'm going to isolate the kick drum and then this exactly. is going to be the, the value for the okay all right yeah things are clicking into place okay <laughs> <laughs> yes i can also another I, thing that i i did with my uh, collaborator danielle rajo she uh was using midi in her performances and she just sent the midi mm. also to me which i was able to get and uh you know do something linked to like the midi that was coming in neat yeah <laughs> okay all right okay you got me hooked this is hell yeah i i need to come up with the dj name now because this is clearly gonna happen yes <laughs> <laughs> um no i love i'm i'm so so excited about this like this this feels like the sort of thing you know we we did this in the span of of an hour uh, mm -hmm. We were able to create something that is way beyond what I thought I would be able to create the first time out. You know, we <laughs> we have really interesting things going on here that are not, um, you know, what, what we're doing here is not like mind blowing ninja level math. This right. is this is very much high like, school like trigonometry. Yeah. And this is this is stuff that makes sense to me. Right. And, and I don't need to know how to calculate sign. I just need to know kind of what it's going to do when I call mm -hmm. this function. And so, exactly. so just like most programming, I don't know what a for loop does when it breaks down to bytecode. I just know that it runs one, you know? And, and mm -hmm. so this is, this is really, really cool stuff that we can do here. Um, Yay. chat, who's trying this, who's going to get out there and, and, and do one of these, like get into shader place right now. Has anybody been doing this along with us? Anybody, anybody coding along? Um, and while people are, are taking time to think, um, I will share shader place here for, for folks who want to give it a try where else. And this is code life. This is the one that you you're able to pipe like music frequencies or get MIDI into. Yes. Yeah. This is like your more okay. professional performance tool. Love it. Okay. Yeah. 
Is there, um, you mentioned earlier the Book of Shaders. So yes. this is, oh, to read it, a gentle step-by-step -step guide through the abstract and complex universe of fragment shaders. Um, very, very, very cool. Yes. A shader space controlled by a Twitch chat. You beautiful monsters. Yes. I, uh, <laughs> yeah, we probably should do that. <laughs> that would be really fun. There, what, there is uh, a so Twitch... Oh no, oh, so, there is so a Twitch what now? There is a Twitch, yes. So, so I, I I taught a class, I was teaching classes on like how to do this over the pandemic and two of my students met at my class and they started a Twitch stream called Curiously Minded where they just will oh, sit together okay. and code shaders. Um, and I'm a huge fan of them. It's Alithia and Eliza are my <laughs> wonderful. I'm so happy that they came to my class. Um, yeah, that's them. Um, and I, they bring different people who code shaders differently because like, you know, I have a certain style of coding shaders. Um, and so it's interesting to see different folks approaches to coding shaders. Um, yeah. Wow, these are beautiful too. I know I'm assuming these are like screenshots exactly. of shaders they made. Yeah. So yes. freaking cool. Love it. Okay. Yeah. Um, for somebody who wants to get started, uh, we, we have shader.place to just try things out and see how it goes. Code Life, mm -hmm. if you want to get serious, Book of Shaders to get some of the, the academics. Anywhere else that somebody should go look if they want to take some next steps here? Yes. Um, so to get inspiration and also possibly be intimidated, you can go to Shader Toy. Um, I think it's shadertoy.com. And that's basically, so what we're writing right now is a fragment shader. These are all of these are all fragment shaders i know i know it's what? like it's so intimidating and not only is it intimidating they also write the code such that it's all optimized and so it's not really meant to be super human readable it's more for oh, okay. optimization and so this is like the place where if you want to get inspired slash extremely intimidated <laughs> um but to like good to good. see yeah shader toy perfect yes just to see the limitations of like what's possible like people have like written a linux kernel in a shader and like also made like a oh dang like yeah like they've done like machine learning in like a shader like you know the most like ridiculous things because like technically ah! it's turing complete and so you know <laughs> yeah um <sighs> okay then... all right i get what you mean about being intimidated holy crap i know yeah I, I do have a, I do teach, so this is using a technique called ray marching, which basically using linear algebra allows you to create a 3D, write a small renderer that, you know, it can be like a hundred lines of code in GLSL to then create a Dang. 3D scene only using the 2D coordinates input. It's amazing. Oh, that's so cool. It's so cool. I just, yeah. yeah, just, just incredible stuff. Um, absolutely beautiful. What's going on here. So, yes. all right. Uh, anywhere else that you want people to look at? I think I think that I don't want to overload people, but I think that that that's a good starting place is to like um, you know get into the community. It's like you know uh, curiously minded, and then also Book of Shaders is a great way to do it on the uh, you know kind of asynchronously at your own pace. And then it, it, in terms of community directly, we've got uh, Top Lap mm -hmm. you mentioned, and then mm -hmm. I that's think for you like said live a couple coding other spots where. Uh, but but the, so in terms of like communities of people who are doing this stuff where you can you can kind of see what other folks are doing, uh, yes. this would be one way yes. to plug in. Are there any other places that that people should look? Yeah, so there's one more. It's called sh uh, Shader Dot Zone. I know we have like a lot of Shader Dots. Um, this is like one more community that's that's specifically tailored to just shaders. Um, it's run by Connor Bell and Patricio Gonzalez Vivo, who made uh, the Book of Shaders, and it's a really like welcoming, inclusive place for people to learn how to shader program i know like i'm throwing out like 70 million things it's just because like i love oh it's a discord awesome yeah okay, great discord. great great yeah yeah um and i think i think that's those are all of the things that i gonna, want to to plug go back here so i don't lose it for the the show notes but yeah this is i mean this has been an absolute blast i uh and y'all if you've been watching along make sure you go and follow char on twitter so that you can get even more of this amazing stuff um, and on your website, I assume you have some links to things if people want to see what you've been working on. Yes, exactly. Um, yeah. it's mostly on like my Twitter and Instagram and stuff. It's my website's a little unupdated. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. Um, but there are I have an email list the... if you want to like, um, you know, keep and if you wanted to take one of my, my lessons or my, my theater classes, I actually teach Ray marching, which is the 3d technique. Um, but I ha I don't have any upcoming classes but if i do i'll like email it to my email list so you can join my email list if that's something you desire so if you want 
hands-on instruction, you got to sign up for this list. Uh, yeah. So that's yeah. sharstyles.com slash email. Um, mm -hmm. All right. Well, I think that is a, a good stopping point for us. So I will uh, do another shout out to our live captioning. We've had Ashley with us from White Coat Captioning all day. Thank you so much for being here, Ashley. And that is made possible through the support of our sponsors, Netlify, Fauna, and Auth0. They're all kicking in to make the captioning possible to help keep all the lights on at the show. Very much appreciated. Um, and we've got some new sponsors coming up that I'm really, really excited about. So stay tuned for that uh, soon. While you're checking out things on the site, make sure you go and look at the schedule. We've got incredible things coming up. We're going to learn about how to use the islands architecture, which is uh, being called partial hydration, a lot of other things. This is a way to make way more performant sites without sacrificing the DX of using component-based JavaScript frameworks. Um, ben has been doing some amazing work in this space, and I think we're even going to see a world premiere of a Slinkity feature. So, uh, you know, maybe tune in and watch that. Alex is going to come teach us about TRPC. Uh, End-to-end -end type safe APIs. Sounds very cool. Don't really know what it means. Can't wait to learn more. Uh, <laughs> Stephanie Murillo is going to come on, teach us how to do better content. And so, so many more things are coming up. Please go here. Get on the calendar. Uh, you'll see everything that's coming up. You can follow on Twitch. If you sub on Twitch, it helps support the show. And I think that's all of the, the things that I have. So with that, Char, any parting words for everyone? Everyone just, the most important thing after learning shaders is to sleep tonight and then try again tomorrow. Cause it's like, there's a lot of stuff that I just kind of threw at all of you. If you sleep and then try it again tomorrow, I guarantee you'll just be magically better at it. It's crazy how that works. That's my, my parting sleep word, is just, just get some sleep tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right, chat. We're going to go find somebody to raid. Thank you all for hanging out. We will see you next time. Thank you.